Great. All right. Shall we all stand, please? Let us turn our Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter 27. Then we will read passages from chapter 27 to chapter 28. Okay. Matthew, chapter 27. Okay, kung kayo po ay nandiyan na sa sinasabi kong talata ay say a lot, amen. amen. Alright, we'll begin reading from verse number 62 of the book of Matthew 27. Alright, here's what the Bible says. Are you with me now? Amen. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation... The chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the, that the Zebra said, While he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. You know, you should put this in your mind that even the enemies knows it. And they're nervous about it. <laughs> and then verse number 63, uh, 64. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. And say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. The watch is the security or the guard. Okay? That's a Navy term, Navy language. So you can see the Navy here. The watch. Yeah, all right. Go your way, make it. As sure as he, as he can. 66. So they went and made the sepulcher sure. Se sealing the stone and setting a watch. Alright? Hindi lamang po kasi yung, yung sepulcher mga patid, parang, parang kweba po yun, Parang cave na doon ipapasok talaga. No? Tandaan po natin, wala hong kabaong noong araw. Okay, binabalot lamang po nila yan, then nilalagay po nila yon ng involving kung anong mga dahon, mga ganoon. But by that time, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina umaga, the spices, yun po yung ginamit po nila. Okay, and then they roll the stone, tinakpan nila, at sa stone, sa, sa, doon mismo sa stone, naglagay sila ng seal ni Pilate. That's the seal of Pilate. Seal po yon ng Roman government, Roman authority. Did you get that? Okay, so kapag ka naglagay, back in those days, even in our days, eh, hindi mo dapat pagka nadyan yung silyo ng Malacanang, huwag mong laruin yan. Ano mang silyo? Silyo ng armed forces, silyo ng Navy, ng Army, ng Air Force, ng PNP, huwag mong paglaruan yan. Kalaban mo ang PNP. Alright? Okay, are you with me? Naunawaan niyo po yun? So, ganun po ang nilagay nila rito. So in other words, everything is ready. Everything is secured dito. Alright, did you get that? Secured na secured kapatid. Kasi merong guardia, merong silio, at merong stone. Okay? Now, in chapter 28, verse number 1, let's keep going. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So we have Mary's here. And behold, tandaan niyo po, I like this. Okay? Notice what the Bible says here. They came at the dawn, no? at the end of the Sabbath, as it, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Then, what's the word? Next, came. All right? Explain ko po ng mabuti yan mamaya. Mary Magdalene 
and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the, uh, to the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is reason. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet. And worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go, tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city, and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave Large money unto the, unto the soldiers. In other words, it's a bribe money. Okay? Saying, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Or we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So, meron tayong dalawang reports dito mga patid. Dalawang uh, pangyayari na pinaniniwalaan ngayon ng ibang mga tao na hindi naman talaga nabuhay na mag at siya talaga ay ninakaw lang yung kanyang bangkay. Kasi ngayon, marami pong naniniwala na ganon. Kaya sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, mag-present sila ng mga remains. Si at uh, pag nakapag-present sila ng buto ng Panginoong si Kristo or whatever na pwede na i-present, eh, siguro mas makapakita nila na talagang hindi na buhay na maguli ang Panginoon. Pero kung wala hong silang may present ibig sabihin ng Panginoon ay nabuhay na maguli. And remember the Bible says there are so many instances, there are so many evidences na ang Panginoong si Kristo talaga ay nabuhay. First, he was sent by, uh, by Peter. And then the five and the twelve, and then the five hundred at one time, and then the whole disciples and the apostles saw him. You see, that was within forty days after the resurrection. Okay, forty days. Because ang 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 fifty days that that's the uh, the Pentecost. You see, so before the Pentecost, na kita pusha mo pa in for just in the span of 40 days nakita siya ni Peter nakita siya na, nakita siya ng uh, uh, ng uh, ng 12 ng, no, nakita siya ng 500 at one time and nakita siya ng mga apostles paano mo tatanggihan yan and even the, the 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 apostle Paul he met him on his way to Damascus di ba kaya makita niyo mga mga taong ito na nakakita sa kanya he, he, they would rather die than deny did you get that? Because they saw Jesus personally, they cannot deny it. They would rather die. They will choose to die rather than deny. Kaya hindi nila kayang itinay yung nakita nila mga kapatid. Kaya makikita nyo, yung iba sa kanila talagang grabe yung kamatayan na pwede naman sa kanilang piliin na wag na silang mamatay. Hindi na silang mag-suffer pero they were tortured mga kapatid. Oh, tiniis nila yung ganong klaseng kamatayan. Pero hindi nila kayang idina yung nakita nila. Alright? So, mamaya babalikan po natin yan 
because I'm going to talk to you as the continuation of my message, but I have to make something uh, different tonight. Because uh, 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 I'm at the end of my missions, and I believe they, they, they will also learn something from this message tonight. Tayo po'y sandaling manalangin. Dakilan Diyos, marami po salamat sa mga talata na binasa po namin ngayon. Salamat Panginoon na meron kayong testamento. Testament na nagpapahayag na totoo na kayo po ay muling nabuhay. And because you are alive, we are also alive and we must be in the ministry alive. Dapat masigla po kami, dapat na dito lahat ang aming energy na ilalagay po namin sa ministry po, Panginoon. Salamat po at pagpalaan niyo po ang minsan ito, mahamon ang bawat isa, maging ang mga kapatiran namin na nasa mission po ngayon. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan po ni Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you. You may be seated in the presence of our God. All right. Pay attention, mga batid, at titignan natin mabuti kung ano ang makukuha po natin dito sa continuation ng kwento about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, lahat po ba tayo ay kumbinsido na ang Panginoong Kristo ay muling nabuhay? You see, no doubt, mga patid, sa lahat ng mga hindi naniniwala at sa lahat ng mga nagdududa, pag-aralan ng mabuti ang salita ng Diyos. You see, use your intellect rather than emotions. You see, lagi ko po ito sinasabi, mga patid, huwag tayong basta-basta maniwala sa mga books na nababasa po natin at lalong-lalo na ngayon sa internet, ang dami kayong makikita na dinidenounce nila ang resurrection ng Panginoong sa Kristo. You see, rather than announce, you see, instead of announcing, they are denouncing, you know, but they cannot do that because we believe uh, firmly, mga patid, on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you see this story here, mga kapatid, the Eh, uh, uh, na, nakita nyo na po yung background maraming best ko na po ito sinasabi rito and I hope kayo mga nandiyan sa mission ay hindi lamang ninyo isang best narinig ito but in this passage mga patid in the context of we have just read from the book of Matthew chapter 27 is about the securing of the tomb okay so it's about the securing of the tomb now sinicure po nila ng mabuti yung tomb na sinabi, ni, sinabi sa King James is the sepulcher, which is the same, mga kapatid. Now, so nung sinicure po nila, makita niyo po kung paano after the report ng mga high priest, you know, yung mga high priest, alam niyo naman po, mga kapatid, imagine, do you understand, mga kapatid, na ang pinakamatinding kalaban ng Panginoong Isokristo noong araw ay hindi po yung mga lasinggero, hindi po mga magnanakaw, hindi po mga mangungurakot, Ang matinding kalaban ng Panginoong Heso Kristo noong araw ay mga reliyoso. Notice what the Bible says here. They were the chief priests. You see that? They're religious people. They're leaders. They're, they're, there are those, the Pharisees also, that, that are teaching the Ten Commandments or the commandments of Moses. You see? Yung po, yung po yung kalaban ng Panginoong Heso Kristo at gustong mawala ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. You see? Now, alam niyo yung pinakamatinding uh, uh, strategy ng Diablo, yung pag-away-awayin yung mga makajos. Dapat pong ilagay po natin sa isipan niyo mga patid, na noong araw pa yan nangyari. You see? May kita nyo noong araw pagka nag-preach ang ibang mga preachers laban sa isang sekta ng pananampalataya at ito namang ibang sekta ng pananampalataya laban naman sa isang sekta ng pananampalataya. Ngayon mga kapatid, it is Baptist against Baptist. You see, kasi sa mga Baptist marami mga tubo, may mga, may mga Seventh-day Baptist, may mga dispensationalist, may mga... Uh, Oh, what was that? You know, he didn't want a soul winning. Marami na ung So it's Baptist against Baptist. So you understand that? Now, pinaliliit, nilolocalize pa yan ng Jablo. Kapatid, laban sa kapatid na. Nilolocalize. Hindi na po yan nilalaro. Hindi na po yun yung isang simbahan na Baptist laban sa ating simbahan. No. 
within this church, mga kapatid, ay kapatid sa kapatid na. So you understand that? Now, you see, we're dealing with people. Ha? Maraming mga tao, mga kapatid. So in this case, mga kapatid, makita niyo po na ang, yung mga, dis, yung, 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 yung mga, pri, yung, the, 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 the high priest and the, uh, the Pharisees, they came to Pilate to, to, to give, uh, to inform Pilate about the plan, you know, wala namang planong ganun ang Panginoon sa Kristo. Ang plano, ang sinasabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo ay katotohanan. Alright? Gibain ninyo ang templong ito ay titatayo ko ito sa ikatlong araw. Alright? You cannot pin me to the grave. You cannot let me stay in the grave because I will arise on the third day. Alright? And so, ang sabi nila, Jesus was a deceiver. Okay? Kaya ang sabi niya, etong mga itong deceiver na ito, kinakailangan bantayan natin yung sepulcher. Ah, patay na, takot, takot pa. Yeah. Takot. Kaya naglagay po sila, ang sabi nila, okay, kaya kinakailang bantayan natin ang mabuti yan. Binabantayan yung patay, mga kapatid. Alright? So, ang nangyari, mga kapatid, ang ginawa nila, naglagay sila ng stone, they roll the stone, they seal the stone, and they put a watch, a guard, a soldier. Alright? And so, the Bible says, in verse number 66, they set everything. Everything is set as far as security of the tomb is concerned. Alright? Did you get that? Nakuha niyo, kapatid? Alright. So, the Bible says, bagamat meron na hong ganun, look at verse number 1 of chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, then what's the word? Came. Came. Why is this important? Why is this word so important? Well, I'm telling you, I really admire these women. You know what? So, pagkat sinil, ng mga taong ito, yung tomb. The tomb was secured, brethren. But the women came anyway. Bagamat grabe na yung pagkasil, yung mabuti, bagamat grabe na yung pagkasecure, pero pumunta pa rin si Ramirez and other women. You see that? And while on their way, kapatid, listen now, while on their way, they're thinking about the three problems. Not just one problem. Not just two problem, problems. But three problems. That they, were, they had in their mind. See? What, that, what, what, what is that? Number one. The stone. The stone. Number two. The seal. Number three. The soldier. You see? These are the problems that they are going to engage in order to see the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see? Naunawa niyo mga kapatid? So tatlong problema ito, hindi lang isa. Habang papunta sila mga kapatid, ang naiisip nila, may tatlo tayong problema. Or maaaring hindi po nila naiisip na mayroong tatlong problema na, na, kanila pong, na, na sila ay may engage. You see, what's that? Number one is the stone. Number two is the seal. Number three is the what? Soldier. All right? Three problems. S uh, stone, seal, and the soldier. Now, here is the thing, my that. The stone is, the stone is the problem that these people need to be controlled. This stone is the problem that they need to control. Alright? So matindi, hindi ba sa problema ito mga patid? Alam niyo mga babae ito. Alam niyo mabigat yung stone ito. You see? So they have to overpower the stone. You understand that? They have to control the stone in order for them to get in. 
Para makapasok po sila, kinakailangang ma-overpower nila yung stone. Let's go to the seal. The seal is the power that they need or that has to be changed. Okay? It's the power that has to be changed. Kinakailangan, ma-overpower din yan. Tandaan po natin, ito po yung seal ni Pilate. Ito po yung seal ng Roman authority. They need to be changed. They need, they, 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 they need to change it. They need to overpower it. Okay? So it's the power. See that? Kapatid, na, nakuha niyo mo patid? The stone is the problem that they need to control. The seal is the power that, they, that has to be changed. Alright? Now, the soldier is the person that has to be confronted. Alright? The soldier is the person that has to be confronted. The stone is the problem that has to be controlled. The seal is the power that has to be changed. The soldier is the person that has to be confronted. I hope you follow that. But the Bible says they came anyway. The women came anyways. All right? Now, gusto ko makita niyo ito mga patid kasi napakaganda. I want, you, I want you to see something here. And then the Bible says in chapter 28 in verse number 1, dumating sila mga patid. But look what the Bible says in verse number 2. And behold, there was a great what? Shaking. A great earthquake. You see, Kung meron mang inaalala yung mga babaeng ito, ay kung paano nila matatanggal yung bato. At kung paano nila mababago yung seal. At kung paano nila matatanggal yung seal yung mga patid. At kung paano nila malalabanan, makakonfront yung soldier. Imagine, they were wi- women. Are you following me? Sila actually, yung malakas sila mga loob na pumunta para puntahan yung lugar na yun. Alright? And then here's what happened. While they are on their way, then the Bible says there was a great earthquake. And when there was a great earthquake, the angel of the Lord descended. Bumabaho yung angel ng Panginoon from heaven. And came and what? Roll back the what? The problem. Pause, pause. Mag-isip muna tayo mga kapatid kung ano pinag-uusapan natin dito. Kapatid, hindi to fiction. Hindi to fables, hindi po ito kung ano-ano lamang mga sabi-sabi. Ito'y totoong pangyayari. Na yung data, mga kababaihan na gustong makita ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, gustong mamit ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, bagamat grabe ho ang hadlang mga kapatid, walang nakaawat sa kanila. They knew it, merong stone, merong seal, merong soldier. But the Bible says, that before they came, behold, there was, when they were there, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Hold it. Hindi pa tapos. Alright? Look at verse number 3. His countenance was like lightning. It is raiment white as you know. It is important to read that. Bakit? And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became a dead man. 
Imagine, kapatid, sabi ng Biblia, nung nandun na sila nakita, nagkaroon ng shaking, nagkaroon ng earthquake, and then the angel rolled back the stone, tinanggal, yung angel na, listen, hindi sila nagtanggal, walang aarestuhin ng mga kababaihan na hindi nagrespeto sa silyo ng Roman authority. Bakit? Hindi po sila ang nagtanggal. Now, do you understand na ang Diyos ang nagtanggal sa pamagitan ng kanyang angel? Sometimes, God is going to break the human rules, the human law for the blessing of His own people. Yeah, He is going to break the human law para lamang pagpalain niya ang kanyang mga anak. Now, you see what happened here? Pagkatapos po niya ni Rollison, and look at this, isa sa kinatatakutan nila ay yung sundalo. Kasi ang sundalo, back in those days, kapatid, grabe yung patakaran. Pag may nakalabas dyan, nabuhay ka pa. Look, patay ka rin. But that time, ang sabi ng Biblia, mga kapatid, he's like a dead man. Yung kinakatakutan nilang sundalo na nagbabantay sa bangkay ng Panginoong si Kristo ay wala akong nagawa. Nanigas. Nanigas. Nanigas like a dead man. Anong magagawa ng dead man? Nothing. Wala akong magagawa. So you understand here, mga kapatid. And the Bible says, the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Now listen to me now. This is very important. Now think about this. I like sabi ko sa inyo kanina, ina-admire ko yung mga kababaihan na ito. Yung kanilang pananampalataya na bagamat kapatid, alam nila na merong kalaban, alam nila na merong resistance, pero mga kapatid, nagpatuloy pa sila at tinignan nila, kinakailangan namin makita ang Panginoong Su Kristo. Kinakailangan namin makita yung body ng Panginoong Su Kristo. Kinakailangan namin makapa, kailangan makapasok kami. Listen, they were women, mga kapatid. Think about that. The thing that you can find sa mga kababaihan na ito is that they are willing to engage in a very different or even in the hard way just for the ministry. May mga ba, may, they have to put spies on the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have a ministry to do. Walang mga kawat, gagawin namin ito kahit may hadlang kinakailang kami pumasok kapatid. Pero nakita ng Panginoon yung kanilang puso patungkol sa ministry. Kapatid, lahat ng hadlang sa ministry, lahat ng possible na pwedeng katakutan nila, hindi po sila nag-disengage, but they engage themselves into that dangerous mission. Kahit na medyo mahirap yung ministry, nagpatuloy pa ho sila. Hindi nakapaghandlang yung stone, hindi nakahandlang yung seal, hindi nakahandlang yung soldier. Bakit? Let me tell you why. Because if you are serious in the ministry, God will put away all the hindrances and for you to do your ministry. Maliwanag po yun, mga kapatid. May ministry yung mga kababaihan. Pero hindi po sila nag-disengage nung nakita nilang may problema. Not just one problem, not just two problems, but three problems. But they did not disengage themselves from that problems. So do you understand? Kapag ka tayo nasa ministry at kapag tayo seryoso sa ministry, We will just let God be God. This is not our ministry. This is God's ministry. You see? 
Do you understand? And I understand. And you must fully aware that ministry is people. You will be dealing with different kinds of people. But if you are in the ministry, difficult times. Are you with me? Difficult times will come. Surely will come. Because you will be dealing with different kinds of people. Siro siro to mga taong ito, envious people. Siro siro to mga taong ito, mga bote, jealous people. Siro siro to mga taong ito, bitter people. Siro siro to mga taong ito, negative people. You see? Now listen, eto yung may engage mo sa ministry, eto yung madidel mo sa ministry. So when the women knew that they will be dealing with these people or dealing with the three problems, all right, they did not disengage themselves. They just keep going. And when they kept going, look, look at the result. It wasn't them. Hindi po sila mga kapatid ang nagdeal sa problema. Ang Diyos ang nagdeal sa problema. You see, now it is very important, mga kapatid, na makita po natin ang mga bagay nito. Because, you know, you'll be dealing with different kinds of people. And if the truth be told, if the truth be, be told, kapatid, you will realize that there are friends who are fake. And you will realize that there are fake friends and the enemies are real. Kayong mga nakakasalamuhan na ng matagal sa mga tao, alam niyo yan. Mabuti pa yung, mabuti pa yung kaaway ay totoo. Pag nagkaroon ka ng walang fake na kaaway. Walang fake na kaaway. Pero may fake na kaibigan. Habang tumatagal ka sa ministry, madidiscover mo na maraming fake na kaibigan pero walang fake na kaaway sapagkat maraming kaaway, totoo ang kaaway mo. Come on, talk to me if you can. So what are you going to do now? Let me just give you three things here, mga kapatid, and I'm done and let's eat. I know you can't get over with it. Maraming fake na kaibigan, pero walang fake na kaaway. Yeah, for it's ra let's rock and roll. Well, wait, ano gagawin po natin? All right, listen now. In every event, notice. I notice here, mga kapatid, the sincerity. That's why in every event or program you plan to launch, engage, and never disengage. In any ministry, anumang ministry na pasukin mo, at anumang ministry na gusto mong subukan at simulan, kapatid, Kung meron mang hardships sa ministry na yan. Listen now, you are dealing with people and not with the things of the people. Kaya nga po, mga patid, sa ministry, ang uunahin natin ay tao. Tao ang inuuna natin at hindi yung possession ng tao. Now, do you understand how, we start, how I started this ministry? I did not start this ministry by money or sa pamagitan ng pera kapatid. No. Ministry is not money. Ministry is people. You see, lalabas ka hindi para maghanap ng pera. Lalabas ka para magharap ng kaluluwa. Kaya nga sa sino mang nasa mission, ang sekreto ng paglago 
ay paghanap ng kaluluwa at hindi paghanap ng pera sapagkat ang pera ay hawak ng kaluluwa. Kaya minsan naihirapan po tayo. Ang magandang makasanayan natin is we must learn how to deal with different kinds of people. Negative people. Unbelievers. Yun ang mga dapat nating ma-deal, mga kapatid. Pero ang kapag ka nasa ministry ka at ang nasa isip mo ay pera, wala kang ministry na may establish. Mas mahirap mag-establish ng bangko kaysa sa church. Yeah. Tandaan mo, ministry is people, not money. All right? Now, every time na nagigipag-engage tayo, every time na mag-start tayo ng ministry mo about that, listen now. Even if this is hard, do not and never disengage. Why? Because that's not your ministry, it is God's ministry. Look at this. Alam nila kapatid, na, mag, na, may, na may merong, merong stone, merong seal, merong soldier. Pero nangyari, pumunta pa rin sila. Bakit? May dala-dala silang spices. To what? It's an embalming, they're engaged in embalming ministry. They have to put the spies, yung pabango doon sa bangkay ng Panginoon sa Kristo at inisip nila, walang mga kahadlang, bagamat kababayin kami, alright, we do not know what's gonna happen there pag nandiyan na kami. But you know, God is in control. There was shaking. Kapatid, maaaring on the way sila, maaaring, you know, they're human, maaaring sila yung nagsishake, pero nung dumating sila, yung gwardiya na ang nagshake. And look what happened. The earthquake is not designed to roll the stone. But it is the sign that God is going to do something. Hindi po yun ang nag-roll ng stone. It was the angel. But why? There was an earthquake. It's a sign that God is going... Do you understand? Go back to the Old Testament and you will find out that every time na ang Panginoon ay may gagawin, nagkakaroon muna ng shaking. Kapatid, kapag ka ang buhay mo ay sinishake na ng Panginoon, ang ibig sabihin niya may mangyayari sa buhay mo. May gagawin ang Diyos sa buhay mo. There must be first the shaking. Shaking will come first before the blessing. And so, kapatid, sinasabi ko, do not disengage yourself. Engage! Engage! Hindi sapagkat mahirap mag-disengage ka na. No, engage! Let God be God. The battle is the Lord's. Kaya minsan, pagka nahihirapan ang tao, umaalis na kaagad sa kanyang trabaho. That's not good. Nakakahiya naman sa mga babaeng ito. Yeah, in fact, totoo po ito. Ano? Totoo po ito, mga men. Nasa loob ng sibahang ito. Nakakahiya na mas una pa tayong sumusuko sa problema kaysa mga babae. Minsan, ang mga babae pa ang naghahanap ng paraan para sa lalaki. Gawo, ang, ang lalaki ang gagawa ng problema, ang babae ang naghahanap ng solusyon. Para hindi ma-discharge lalakarin ng asawa. Oh! Para ma-promote lalakarin ng asawa. Oh! Teka lang po, pinagpapawisan ako. But listen, nakakahiya naman na kung tayo pag nahihirapan tayo, aatras tayo. I-disengage natin at sasabihin natin hindi kalooban ng Panginoon. Here's another one. 
you've got to engage when there is hardship. Because engaged people are passionate people. People who love. People na nagmamahal sa kanyang ministry. They have passion, mga kapatid. They knew what the mission is. They serve in it and they live it out. Yan ho ang taong engage. Determinado. Yan ang isang kristyano na nasa ministry, na engage sa ministry, and they will, he, he, he's not gonna disengage himself from the, from the ministry, but lalo pa siyang mag involved sa kanyang ministry because an engaged person is a passionate person. I hope you get that. Now, number two. If you have problem of the, uh, with a uh, pro problem like that, at hindi ka po magdidi, hindi ka magdidi engage, you will just engage. Then, you focus on your ministry. Focus your ministry or focus your program around your ministry. Now, I think this will help you. Kayo mga nandiyan sa mission, this will help you. Okay? Pag gumawa kayo ng programa, siguraduhin ninyo na ang inyong programa ay nakafocus doon sa inyong mission. Ano ang inyong mission? Ano ang inyong ministry? If you are here in this church right now, you have ministry. Ano ang iyong ministry? Alright? May programa. Ano ang, ang programa ay dapat nakafocus doon sa iyong ministry? Hindi ka magkakaroon ng programa na hiwalay sa iyong ministry. Hindi ka magkakaroon ng programa na hiwalay sa iyong mission. Kaya wala akong nangyayari sa mission kasi may programa tayo na hindi naman kailangan sa mission. May programa tayo na hindi naman natin kailangan at hindi connected sa ministry. You see, na we understand na minsan nakikialam tayo sa ibang programa na hindi naman. You see, there's a reason kung bakit may programa tayo din sa church na ito. Why? Because every program that we create in this church is always connected to our ministry. It will help your ministry. There is nothing in it that is not connected to your ministry. All right? Be sure, kapatid, na yung iyong programa ay laging connected sa iyong ministry. Be sure na yung program sa mission ay laging connected sa mission. It is so important. You see, this one here, ang dala-dala nila, mga patid, ay spices. Connects, ano mission nila? To embalm the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, huwag na natin pag-usapan na siya na buhay na mag-uli. Huwag na natin usapan na, katulad sinabi ko kanina sa iyo, sa, kanina, sa inyo kanina umaga, na pumunta sila doon, hindi para masaksihan. Yung pag-resurrect -pag -pag ng Panginoong Sa Kristo, muling pagkabuhay ng Panginoong Sa Kristo, huwag natin pag-usapan yan. Pag-usapan natin yung sadya nila, yung mission nila. Ano po yung mission nila? Ang mission nila is to embalm, pabanguhan yung katawan ng Panginoong Sa Kristo. You see, remember, it's on the third day. Anong nasa isip ng tao? Baka makarating pa sa fourth day. Kasi pagka nakarating na sa fourth day, ang isang bangkay, kapatid, unti-unti na yan na magdidikay. Are you learning? You see? So pag, bago man yan magdikay, bago man yan magbabulok na unti-unti, papabanguhan na yan. See that? That's the mission. Alright? Anong daladala nila mo, kapatid? Spices. You see, the involving material back in those days. Now, do you understand na meron po tayo mga hawak-hawak, meron po tayo mga pinagkakaabalahan na wala namang connection sa ating ministry, sa ating mission. Sabi ko nga sa mga missionaries natin, ilang oras ang ini-spend ninyo sa napakahalagang bahagi ng inyong ministry. Come on, talk to me if you can. So what's in our ministry here? Listen, kung ikaw ay nasa music ministry, ano ang daladala mo? Siyempre, it should be 
instruments, musical instruments. Ano pinagkakabalahan mo? Musical instruments. Ano pinagkakala? It's all about music because I am in the music ministry. You see, kapatid, I am your pastor. I am a preacher. Then I will not spend my time watching Sicario and the Seal Team film. I like it. I love it, mga kapatid. Pero hindi ako mag-aaksaya ng panahon. Bagamat gusto ko lagi nakakakita ng mga tumatambling, nasasaktan, bumabangon pa rin. You know, I like that. Hindi, pagbabangon, wala ng kamay, pero bumaputok pa rin. You know, gusto ko yun. Hindi ko lang kung paano makaputok, wala ng kamay. But anyways, tinuturuan kami na pagka wala ng, hindi na kaya ng gatilyo, ilagay sa ngipin, talian yung ano. <laughs> yung mga ba? You know, but it's all in the film, mga kapatid. But what I'm trying to tell you, sinasabi ko lamang, gusto kong panuurin yun. Pero darating sa aking kaisipan, ilang oras ang i-spend ko dun. Hindi po ba mas magandang magbasa na lang ako at mag-aral na lang ako? Baka ma-preach ko pa sa inyo rito yung war. Baka, baka may preach ko po sa inyo rito ang World War II. You only have 13 hours to survive. Hindi nyo na naiintindihan yun mga kapatid. Kung hindi nyo naiintindihan, magsikaryo kayo. But you understand what I'm saying? Ano mang ministry na kayo ay involved wag kayong gagawa ng programa na hindi konektado doon. Sapagkat later on, mas mahihirapan kayo sa ministry and that's the point that you will make up your mind and make a decision that you are now quitting from your ministry. You are trying little by little trying to disengage yourself from your ministry. What a sad thing. At sasabihin natin, bakit ako nahihirapan? Kasi wala doon yung passion mo. Napunta na sa pelikula ng Siltem. Napunta na sa Sicario. Napunta na sa Korean novela. Nandun na yung passion mo. Wala na sa ministry. But the sad thing is you are still in the ministry. Tapos ipagmamalaki pa natin, ang tagal ko na sa ministry ito, ang pinagtiisan ko, akala mo talaga naghirap. 12 years na ako sa mission na ito. Pinagtiisan ko ang hirap. Luha, dugo, at pawis. Akala mo talaga, grabing hirap Salamat sa Panginoon, nagkaroon ako ng dugo na buhusan. Itong building na ito na buhusan ito, ng dugo ko mga kapatid. Lumuha ako rito. Pero kapatid, lahat siya na in-enjoy ko. They are they're willing to die. They took the risk. Even the Apostle Paul and the rest of the Apostles, like what I've told you, they would rather what? Die than Deny. And so, you've got to focus on your program around your ministry or mission. And this brings me to the last point. In this church, and may I call the attention of the pastors and preachers in our missions. And all the preachers who are involved in ministry here. Because in this church, I preach to call the people to action. I preach to call you to action. Because I want action rather than giving, just giving you knowledge. Alam niyo po ba yun? 
Pag every time natatayo ako rito, hindi po ako basta lamang magbibigay sa inyo ng knowledge. Ayoko, ayoko mga kapatid, bigyan kayo ng information. I, 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 I don't like it. You have an information without action. Every time I give you an information, there must be an action. There must be an action for every information. Kaya minsan nagiging mabagal ang paglago ng mga gawain kasi maraming beses na tayo lamang ay tumatanggap ng information, knowledge, at marami ng knowledge sa iyo, mabibless tayo, pupunta tayo rito, mananalangin tayo, and then uuwi tayo sa bahay, tapos lang lahat. Wala ng action. Here's the thing. You ready for this? Let me just wake you up kayong mga nasa ministry, kayong mga nasa mission. You should love the mission and not the method. Don't just love the method, but love the mission. Alam nyo, here's what I'm saying. Many Christians are Passionate. Are you are you still re- listening? Many Christians are passionate about their ministry, but not the ministry. One more time. Many, many who are engaged in the ministry, you love your ministry, but not the ministry. In other words, kapatid, tinan nyo, anumang, 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 alright, I hope you're aware of this. I, I, I believe, anumang nangyayari sa main church ay nangyayari din sa mission at possible na mangyari kung hindi pa naman nangyayari. So, babala ito sa inyo, kayong mga nasa mission. Okay? Maraming mga nasa ministry, mahal nila ang ministry, pero hindi nila alam ang purpose ay hindi nila mahal ang purpose ng ministry. Listen now, bakit mayroon tayong choir? Not just for singing before the preaching. Bakit tayo merong mga mga uh, mga mga ing-ing? Bakit meron tayo mga musicians? Not because, not just to accompany the music. You see, yan ho ang ginagawa ng musicians to accompany the music. Alright? So, pwede ho tayo magkaroon ng choir na walang piano. Pwede ho tayo magkaroon magkanta dito na walang eng-eng. Pwede ho ako mag-preach na walang choir. Because the main thing about the service is worship. Iniahanda lamang ho lahat ng mga meron tayo rito ang ating magandang pag-worship sa Diyos, honor sa Diyos, at pag-glorify sa Diyos. You know ang ginagawa po natin. But what is sad today is, wala na tayong, wala na, wala na yung amor natin sa pakikinig ng salita ng Diyos at pagbigay ng honor at nakatutok na tayo sa ministry natin without connecting our ministry to the main thing. Did you get that? Did you get that? I hope this is clear. You love the method but not the mission. Many are passionate about their ministries but not the ministry. What is the main ministry here? What is our ministry? What is the ministry? Winning people. Ako po'y nakarating sa simbahan Baptist Church sa Camarines Norte doon sa bundok mga kapatid na hindi na makarating ang sasakyan kaya naglakad na lamang kami maputik Grabe. Pagdating namin doon, ang upuan, kapatid, ay kahoy na binalatan na walang sandalan.
mapalad ka kung matatapat ka na maupo sa walang buko. You understand what buko? Yung, yung inaanuhan ng sanga yun eh. Kasi pag tinagal mo yung saya, sanga, nagiging buko na yun. Alright? Ay kung maupo ka doon, tapos na sentro pa. So you understand what I'm saying? Nakarating po ako doon, pero pag nag-awitan sila ng Tagalog, boy, I'm telling you, wala silang kasuutan ng katulad ng kasuutan natin, nakachinelas yung iba, yung iba nakayapak. Yung, isa, yung iba, mga kapatid, ng mga lalaki, you understand, wala silang, you know, they, may, may, may parang pag pumunta sila, parang ang nipis-nipis ng pantalon at ng shorts nila na wala pang underwear, tapos uupo sa may buko. Hope you understand what I'm talking about. But brethren, seryoso sila. Hindi kanya ng wall nila walang salamin. So you understand that? It is the ministry. It's the ministry. But listen, gaano kalungkot mga patid? Kung ang atensyon na lamang natin ay nasa spices at wala na sa Panginoon sa Kristo. Let me tell you something about this. Let me tell you kung gaano katotoo ang sinasabi ko. Na pagka nawala kayo sa ministry, nau-offend kayo. My question is this. Bakit hindi kayo no offend pag hindi kayo nagsusol winning? Bakit hindi kayo no offend pag may nakita kayong unbeliever na daanan nyo lang, hindi nyo na win? That is the ministry. Because you are concerned about your ministries but not the ministry. Pag nawala yung spices, hindi natutuloy. But you listen to me now. It's so important to hear this message. Ilan sa mga membro na dating mga nasa ministry na umalis dito na hanggang ngayon nagsasalita laban sa akin, pinipersonal na ako, it's because they were suspended the ministry. Yung, yung, yung personal problem nila, ginawa nilang doctrinal problem, kaya nag-invento sila ng doktrena na para lamang patunayan nila na kaya ako umalis dyan kasi hindi na ako naniniwala sa tinuturo ni pastor. Pero ang totoo nun, mga patid, nagsimula sa pagkawala nila sa ministry because they are not performing in the ministry spiritually. You try to read the book of James and you will find out that even in the singing, you've got to sing spiritually. How many of us singing in the choir, singing in the specials, kapatid, that you are not singing anymore spiritually? You already mastered it. Minister natin yung ministry natin. That's why you are passionate about your ministries but not the ministry. Nakuha niyo po yung punto na yun, mga kapatid? This is important. This is important. It's so sad. Na pagka tinanggal kayo sa Sunday school, mau-offend kayo. Pag hindi kayo nag-soul winning, hindi naman kayo na-offend. Pag tinanggal sa mga ministries, kaya nga mga patid, masyado kayong na-in love sa ministry ninyo, but not in the ministry. We've got to see Jesus. We've got to see Jesus. Now, maybe you are in this state of shaking right now. 
Maaring si Shake ka ngayon ng Panginoon. Maaring ni Ayanik ka ngayon ng Panginoon. Maaring masakit sa iyo kung anong nangyayari sa iyo. Maaring anuman ang nararamdaman mo ngayon. Just keep going. Keep going. Why? Because it's a sign that God is going to do greater things in your life. That's not the end of your ministry. That's not the end of your Christian life. That is not the end of your joy in your ministry. God wants you to enjoy it more abundantly. Nakita ko ang lahat ng ito. Dinala rin ako ng Panginoon. When I was in San Pedro, dinala rin ako ng Panginoon sa island of Patmos. Bawat isa sa atin. I don't know about you. Pero naranasan ko kung paano ako i-exile ng Panginoon. Salamat na lang na may paraan ng Diyos kung paano niya kausapin ng kanyang anak. Mag- mas marami, medyo, siguro mas ma- masyado na tayong busy sa ministry na hindi na natin nakakausap ang minister. Too busy teaching in Sunday school without talking to God anymore. Too busy in, 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 in your music ministry without reading your Bible. You can read the notes, you can read the music, but you cannot read your Bible. You have no time to read your Bible. You have no time for the ministry. That's why yung method na gugustuhan natin pero yung mission ayaw natin. Parang pupunta mga kapatid sa evangelistic, ang sarap kayang sumakay. Ang sarap kaya pagkapapunta pa lamang pero pag nagsusol winning na at hahanapan ka na ng bisita, yun ang nasa isip mo kaya ayaw mo sumama. Because like what I've told you, like what I've told you, I will never waste God's money. Nandiyan ngayon ang mga mission natin. Makinig kayo ng mabuti. Gusto ko marinig nyo ito. Naalala ko yung sinabi ni Brother Francis. Brother Francis, nandiyan ka, di ba? Nandiyan si Brother Francis. All right. Sabi ni Brother Francis, napakaganda ng sistema natin. Si Brother Francis nang galing po yan sa isang malaking simbahan sa Amerika and I know him at doon ko siya na-meet. Doon kami nag-meet ni Brother Francis. And uh, by the time gusto niyang bayaran ang aking kape si Starbucks na meron nang nagbayad sa akin. You see? Sana kukunin ko lang yung bayad niya sapagat bayad na yung akin. But anyways, sabi ni Brother Francis no last uh, evangelistic meeting sa Panike, Tarlac. Gusto niya mag-testimony pero hindi na natuloy yung testimony niya kasi marami nang, yeah, marami na. Okay, but anyways, sabi niya, napakaganda ng sistema natin. Kasi kalain mo, palalabasin ka, may support ka. Pagdating doon sa area, Ipo-provide pa yung simbahan. The mission house. Yeah. Ipo-provide pa. And then, pagdating pa, ngayong nandyan na, nagpapadala pa ng ganito, evangelistic meeting, tinutulungan pa para mag-ipo ng maraming tao. Yan ho ang nakita ni Brother Francis. And that is really, really true. Na nakikita ko yung nagpapasalamat, na nakikita niya po yan. Pero gusto ko pang may makita pa kayo behind that. It is because I don't want to waste God's money. Amen. Ito ho ang totoong prinsipyo ng businessman. Pagka nag-invest ka, nagsimula ka ng business, huwag kang tumigil dyan. Alright? Know this. Kaya tinutulungan natin silang mag-win ng souls para lumago ang kanilang business. The business of winning people. The business of ministry. Ministry business. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Hindi natin pababayaan. 
Kasi pag pinabayaan natin, yung growth ay napakabagal. So anong ginagawa natin? Pinupuntahan natin yung mga mission natin para magkaroon sila ng maraming prospect na pwede nilang i-follow up at pwede nilang i-Bible study pagkatapos pag-alis natin. Thus, yun ay magiging means para ang gawain ay lumago. Para mag-grow yung business. Kaysa naman, mawalan sila ng mga tao, mga kapatid, and then what will happen to the church? What will happen to the expenses? What will happen doon sa investment natin? Babagsak na lang. Mawawala na lang. Ayoko hong mangyari yun. So ano pong ginagawa natin? Tinutulungan natin palaguin pa rin yung kanilang gawain. You see? Now, sa tulong natin na yan, pag hindi pa rin lumago, yung businessman na ang tanggalin natin. Because he do not know how to handle the business. Do you understand that? So that's the philosophy pagdating po sa business, kapatid. You have to study. You see? Kaya akala nyo, pag nagpastor kayo, ganun-ganun lang, maghihintay lang ng mga tao. No, you have to study. Kaya kita nyo, so hindi ho tayo magtapon. Nakapag-invest na po tayo ng libu-libong pera. Hundreds of thousands, kapatid. And then, pababayaan mo na lang. So what's gonna happen? Sino responsible po noon? Hindi lang mo responsible. Sino ang accountable? Sino ang mananagot sa Diyos? This church. And God may not use us again. Bakit? We do not know how to handle God's money. Nonawaan niyo yun, mga kapatid? See? Kaya ho natin tinutulungan. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, seryosuhin natin pag pumunta tayo, hindi laro-laro. Kaya nga nagdeklara na po ako ngayon na lahat ng mga may problema pagdating doon sa evangelistic meeting, suspendido sa pagsama sa evangelistic meeting. They cannot, they cannot join in the evangelistic meeting because I'm serious with this. Seryoso ako sa ginagawa natin, sino seryoso ako sa proyekto natin, seryoso ako sa paghandle ng pera natin, seryoso ako sa paghandle ng, ng ministry natin. Church, bawat sintabo, bawat peso na nilalagay niyo sa offering envelope, pinagpipray ko yan. Tandaan niyo mga patid, walang offering dito na hindi po ako nagbibigay. Hindi ko po ito sinasabi sa nagmamalaki po ako sa inyo. Because sinasabi ko lamang po ito sa inyo sapagat naniniwala ako sa ministry natin. There was a time last uh, last uh, Thursday morning kasama ko ho yung dalawa. Si Dan Hill at saka si Isaac sa bahay. So as they always do, pag nandiyan sila sa bahay nila, hindi ko binaguho yung kanilang ginagawa. Sabi ko, okay, pag nagising kayo, magbabasa kayo ng Bible. So nagising sila, nagbasa sila ng Bible. Itong Bible na ito, iniiwan ko dito sa church. May Bible ako dito sa church. May Bible ako sa sakyan na lagi kong binibit-bit. May Bible akong permanente doon sa study table ko. So yun ang pinagamit ko sa kanila. It's my old Bible. Mga kapatid. Tapos, so ginamit nila, sabi ko, you read the book of Proverbs chapter 28. Chapter 28. That was Thursday. And so, nagbasa sila at uh, maya-maya, nagagalit si, uh, si Dan Hill. Sabi niya, bakit mo binabagsak? Kasi nagpapasahan lamang po sila. Hindi eh. ko sila binigyan ng tag-isa. Bagamat meron pa huko doon mas malaki, mga kapatid. That's family Bible. Kala ko nakakatawa yun. But anyways, hindi, wala kayong idea sa family Bible. It's huge. But anyways, so, sabi ko, okay, basa kayo. So, ang ginagawa nila, nagpapasahan lang sila. Ang ginagawa ni Isaac, pagkuhan sa kanya, ilipat niya. Yeah, sabi niya, ba't mo binabagsak? Bible yan. See how spiritual he is? Alright. Pero mga patid, nung binagsak niya, naglaglagan yung mga laman ng Bible ko. May mga nakaipit-ipit doon kung anong mga nakaipit, you know. And uh, some of you, hindi ko alam, nag-iipit kayo ng mga messages doon. But anyways, uh, 
Anyways, so, mamaya mamaya, tapos na sila. Sabi na, Lolo, tapos na po kami. Okay, sabi ko, mag-pray na kayo. Pray na. Sino nag-pray? Si Daniel. Okay. So, nag-pray. Pagkatapos siya mag-pray, okay, kasi habang nagluluto ako, mga kapatid, mabuti hindi ako nagluluto. Nagluto ako sapagat nandun sila. <laughs> hindi ho yan nangyari nung si Maki pa yung magkasama kami. Mas grabe ho ang nangyari. Okay. All right. And so, what happened is, tapos na ako magluto. Sabi ko, okay, tapos na kayo. Tapos na mag-pray. Ligpit na. So, habang nililigpit yung Bible at maglalatag na ako ng, ng plato, mga kapatid, nakita ko yung mga nahulog. May mga messages ako na nakasulat sa papel. And then, isa ko sa mga nahulog ay envelope. Envelope. Yeah, sabi ko, oh, envelope. Kala ko, may sinisingit lang ako rito kasi saan man ako pumupunta na merong service, nag-offering din po ako. Pero pagtingin ko, ba, parang may laman. At nung nakita ko, binasa ko, it's a Christmas gift from mothers. Sa inyo, mga mothers, Christmas gift galing sa inyo. Sabi ko, wala naman akong tinanggap yung pala si Maki kay, Ma, kay, kay, kay John Hill, sa iyo binigay. Binigay ng mother siya ta John Hill, pinabibigay sa akin. So, nailagay ato. Hindi ko alam kung si Maki o si... Kasi kung kay Maki, wala na huyon. But anyways, uh, <laughs> kay John Hill, okay. All right. Now, so, what happened is, na nakita ko, Christmas gift, ibig sabihin, December pa to. Sabi ko, salamat na lang na naibagsak ni Isaac yung Bible. At nahulog, mga kapatid. Pero alam nyo, sabi ko, this is it. It means, God is giving me again the chance to give. Hindi ako masaya sapagkat meron na naman laman yun, pero masaya ako sapagkat meron naman akong ibibigay sa Panginoon. Now, you understand the saying na every time na may, nagkakaroon, if you are aware of this, every time na nagkakaroon tayo ng blessing na naiisip natin ay Panginoon. Sapagkat ang sabi ko nga po sa inyo, kung may empty tomb, dapat walang emptying puso at emptying, pa, emptying pag-iisip sapagkat punong-puno na dapat tayo ng kaisipan at gawain ng Panginoon. But brother, what is in your heart tonight? Ayong, anong naiisip nyo ngayon tungkol sa gawain? How is your passion? Mahal mo lang ba yung method o yung mission? Will you be offended because nawala sa iyo? Will you be sad pag nawala sa iyo yung ministry mo? Or you'll be happy because you will spend more time for God? Minsan iniisip po natin, mawawala tayo sa Sunday School Ministry, mawawala tayo sa Music Ministry, mawawala tayo sa Asher's Ministry, mawawala tayo sa Security Ministry, mawawala tayo sa Choir, mawawala tayo sa kung ano-ano pang ministry. Meron tayo rito, mga kapatid, pero hindi natin naiisip, baka gusto akong kausapin ng Panginoon. God will put me to exile. God will exile me. Because God wants to talk to me. Minsan, kapatid, listen now, painggan niyo mabuti ito. Sapagat this is good at alam ko makikinabang kayo rito. Minsan, iniisip natin, expert na tayo sa ministry. Pero hindi natin naiisip wala na pala tayong magandang relasyon sa Panginoon at wala na tayong magandang relasyon sa ating ministry. We are expert on this ministry, on your ministry, but you are not expert on the ministry. Hope this message is clear. Kapatid, Kapag ka ginusto natin, tandaan nyo. Ano man ang mangyari, don't quit because it's hard. 
don't quit or disengage because you are dealing with different kinds of people like jealous people, envious people, uh, negative people, bitter people. Huwag mong i-disengage sa sarili mo. Sa halip, sabihin mo, yes, Lord. They need me. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo kanina, after the all hail, what is the next? Go tell. After the all hail, the next is go tell. That's the ministry. I'm, I'm simply saying tonight, you can enjoy your ministry God's way. Am I clear to you? Yeah. Shall we all stand, please? Tumayo tayo lahat. Dakilan Diyo, salamat po sa narinig po namin ngayong gabi. Pagpalain niyo po ang inyong salita sa puso ng inyong mga anak. Salamat na kami po ay binigyan niyo ng pribileyo na makapakinig na mensaheng ito. Maging sa mga mission po namin na away marinig po nila at maunawaan po nila ng mabuti ito. Pagpalain niyo po ang mga anak niyo sa paglapit po sa inyong baral na trono. Dinggin niyo po, O Diyos, ang karaingan ng inyong mga anak. Please. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. God is speaking to your hearts with that message. Then let's do it. Let's come to the throne of God tonight. Kilang Diyos, marami pong salamat sa ginawa niyo po sa aming kalagitnaan. Salamat po, O Diyos, sa mga salita niyong nahayag. Ipagpalain niyo po, O Diyos, ang mga salita niyo na siya pong nagbigay ng liwanag o naway nakapagbigay ng liwanag sa amin na nasa ministry. Pagpalain niyo po, O Diyos, at patuloy niyo pong gamitin at gawing kagamit-gamit ang mga anak niyo na matuto po kami sa inyo pong gawain. Salamat po, Ama. At naumasa po ako ng minsaheng ito ay magkakaroon po ng epekto sa buhay po namin bilang manggagawa. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan po ni Jesus. Amen. Alright, thank you. Back to your seats. Did you get something here? Did you learn something? All right. So I'll put